Namaste, angels. This will be the weekly general reading for the period of today. Yes, today, since it's now 12.52 a.m. Um, Sunday, July 1st through Saturday to come, July 7th, 2018. I'm going to begin with a card from the Journey of Love Oracle. And the card is called Soft. And it's number 47. I knew that this was our card. Sometimes I'll pull from the top after I do some shuffling and stuff. And sometimes I'll shuffle in front of you guys. But I knew this was our card um, after coming to it a couple times in my, you know, shuffling alone and, you know, just noticing and feeling all of the green or earth energy coming from it. And also this like moon or um, like sphere in the center. This was very Capricorn uh, full moon for me. And then I accidentally saw what the top card was and it's yin yang lover, which we, um, I read this in one of the readings I did earlier this week. I did a couple of impromptu sort of random ones that the universe had uh, guided me to do. Yin Yang Lover was a card I read in one of those. Also um, with this energy of a moon here and a lot of red for like passion and creativity in the fire signs and also um, the earth signs. So this can be representing the energy of um, earth signs as well, of course, uh, not only Capricorn, but Virgo and Taurus. We could be jumping right into that. Card is also card number 47 equals 11. I'm going to read this one from the book. Soft, a sanctuary bathed in soft light. Your heart is receptive, inviting and gentle. It brings strength to the weary, comfort to the lonely, and healing to the wounded. It's a magnet for all that's needed, for you, your beloveds, your world. Don't imagine you must always be a fighter going against the part of your nature that longs for harmony and peace. This is your time to be soft, to surrender, to let the subtle waves of your heart invite in love and to receive. In doing so, you will give so much. This oracle brings you a message of peace. Surrender now, be soft, even just for this moment of quiet, refl quiet reflection. You have perhaps been working too hard at growing and living. Take some moments to replenish and to allow the divine to help you, dear one. Be soft so that you're receptive to the divine. It is when we let go that we truly perceive the obstacles that lie between us and oneness with the divine lover. Let go and perceive that the divine lover is already awakening in your heart. This is page number 111, by the way. You are the softness he desires. You help light his way. You nurture all that he holds dear. Though tempest clouds dismay, and in the quiet of the storm, his gentleness comes through, and in the shelter of his arms, his heart is there for you. I like that, and I, I agree, um, including for myself, that sometimes we have to be reminded, uh, and maybe more so as uh, air signs, the Gemini female is considered like the Miss Independent of the Zodiac. Sometimes we have to be reminded to take some time for ourselves and to allow ourselves to be nurtured and to um, nurtured too, rather than just us being caregivers to others. Um, and but this includes, you know, the men, males, um, masculine, and you know, um, so it's like not gender specific. It's not sexuality specific. We are all. Um, capable of stopping and taking a breath and allowing somebody to do something for us rather than us, you know, like always catering to others to tap into that feminine energy of surrender that is connected for me to a moon. All right. So that said, I'm going to move on to the universal love Oracle and I'm beginning with transmutation. Oh, you know what? I didn't do the dice. Let's do that. This week, Spirit says yes. Sp 
keeping money and weekend away, perhaps at least for um, those in the United States because of the 4th of July, which I think is Wednesday. So people will be probably taking some kind of weird long weekend or something. Enjoy if you are, um, be safe. So yeah, I'm going to the cards and beginning with the energy of transmutation. So it's this fire energy yet again, we just saw some uh, in the yin yang lover card. Transmutation is all about taking the negative, you know, cords of attachment and energy of emotion and turning it into love, which allows us and enables us to, con you know, to ascend further and opening to celebration. Maybe just celebrating that fact that we're like the um, card I just read described moving closer to oneness, transmutation and golden memories, more fire. <sighs> Okay, and this one really helps us to ascend when we can let go again of the negative cords of attachment and emotion and use them, uh, transmute them to love, letting them go, surrendering them and releasing our past certainly helps us to continue to ascend. And we just need to. And this could be part of that being soft also. You know, you don't have to hold up all this stuff. You can drop it like a hot fucking rock is what I like to say when I look at this card. You know, it's like, like it's burning a hole through your hand. Drop that baggage because it's holding you back. It's your obstacle. And it can be turned into love. Like, right? More importantly, it can be turned into love and um, which will help you to ascend in as well as those around you and the very earth itself. Transmutation. Speaking of the earth itself, this earth energy now comes in and joins us. We just saw earth and fire. <laughs> we just need the wind, right? Earth, wind, and fire. Um, earth connection. Actually, the, uh, the wind comes in here too, because this card represents like the planet Venus for me, ruler of Libra, Gemini, Taurus. Uh, so there's, there's your wind too. Um, this is about abundance and the flow of abundance opening up to us, which also uh, will happen when we release that which is holding us back. Transmutation and one more, it's more fire message from afar. Um, now all this fire, by the way, can be here because of, and especially with message from afar, looking at this one, um, there's a lot of air. There's a lot of air and fire too. I've seen this earth and fire in the cards that we've seen, but there's a lot of air and fire connections this week. So we have Mars retrograde in Aquarius. That can be connected to the message from afar. Aquarius is the uh, ruler of technology. Um, so it could be like email, right? Or online communications or something. That could be, or long distance phone calls. Um, also, both rulers of Gemini, Mercury, Venus, located in Leo this week before Venus moves out, I think at the end of the week or next week, she moves on. But right now she's in um, Leo. Yeah, next week I think she moves on. Maybe, is it the ninth? Might be the ninth. She moves into Virgo. So we'll talk about that next week. Um, but this week, yeah, she and Mercury are both in Leo. So there's your air and fire too, and also perhaps connected to uh, communication. Mercury, the communication planet. Gemini, the great communicator. Um, and then we have Jupiter. So Jupiter not connected to the air element or aspect of it, but Jupiter ruler of Sagittarius also retrograde in Scorpio. And of course, Jupiter, the daddy of all planets. So when that one is doing anything, we feel it. And it's the planet people say of luck. I say of karma. I don't believe in luck, um, but uh, of luck, karma, expansion, growth, and um, coming with message from afar, and this could be connected to the Ascension and to that transmutation card, uh, which keeps popping up and which it is actually currently opposite right now. This could be your growth and expansion, a la Jupiter. I'm gonna cut. Do I need to move the camera? What card is that? Something just flew across my room. It is relationship, um, which means that if we are finding ourselves having difficulty in our relationships with others, then we 
really need to put some more into our relationship with ourselves. And this can also be connected to the energy of the first card that I read, soft, and the need to nurture ourselves and to allow ourselves to be nurtured by others, allow ourselves to learn to receive. And stick it back in arbitrarily. And aside from that, I have come to balance which also represents uh, fire energy for me because it's very temperance-like. Temperance, major arcana card in the traditional tarot, represents the sign of Sagittarius. So again, Jupiter. This card, however, also brings in the energy of air and water for me. Um, so all of the air signs, all of the water signs, and is about the need um, for healing. And the overall energy this week is love. And I'm getting more fire from this as well. All this red and orange and purple. Um, like I can feel the passion coming from this card, emitting from this card. All right, so divine feminine this week about herself. The masculine about the feminine. Himself. And the union as a whole. Overall. What the masculine would have the feminine do toward the union this week. Surrender, contribute what he himself is willing to. What the universe would have the two do. And the outcome. Divine Feminine, very nice. So taking those negative um, emotions that we may have been harboring, things like resentment, regret, right? The inability to forgive, old pain from childhood, from past relationships, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, that we just sort of kept it with us and carried it. It's time to let it go. It's time to let it go, but you can recycle it. You can take all that like hate and some, in some cases, you know, evil and negativity, pain, and turn it into a positive by transmuting it back to love and right? our overall energy love. The masculine about the feminine this week, trilogy of light. So we have this earth and fire again converging upon each other and some, some water here too. Um, but more importantly, this is about us moving closer to oneness with the divine, with the universe and becoming maybe more like a trinity of light rather than a trilogy. Masculine about himself, ooh, fear. So it's still more of this fire energy and so that's telling me that like he's, being a, he's afraid to pursue his passions, which may include the feminine, or I would hope does. Um, but also, I mean, like his creative outlets, like there's this, he's being moved to try new things and do new things and maybe move toward, um, you know, some sort of spiritually based business, if not, you know, as his actual job or like a moonlighting thing on the side or whatever, and just being afraid to, to pursue those passions of his and his creative outlets. We've got a theme going already. We, so we started out with all the red and fire and here we are with like the red, green, yellow, even some pink coming together. So like fear of this, fear of this moving closer to oneness, fear of maybe moving closer to the feminine and the two of them becoming like uh, uniting as like a spiritual being. That's, that can be scary. And I think it is this week for the masculine at least. Um, but overall, how is he feeling about the union as a whole? Spiritual growth. So the fact that there's fear doesn't mean that he doesn't recognize the positive um, aspects of, you know, what this and this... <laughs> um, can do not only for himself but for the feminine also and the union as a whole and then humanity all right the higher good as they say overall the mystic 
Mystic is very high priestess like for me, Major Arcana card two in the traditional tarot, the high priestess, which represents um, air signs and particularly Gemini for me, and also water. All right. Um, in this case, it's air signs and particularly Aquarius and also water, um, which would make sense. This could be this week in, in particular connecting to the energy of both Aquarius and Scorpio. And I say that because, um, again, Mars, the red planet, ruler of Aries, is also a ruler of Scorpio and is located this week in um, Aquarius. So we have that air and that water coming together. This card is guiding us to pay attention to our intuition and to... Like acknowledge what we know, right? We're wise, we have information and use it in, in you know, an intelligent way that's best, again, for the higher good. So you're going to employ together your intuition, your, you know, logic, intelligence, right? Analytical skills, um, emotions, and the water, put them all together, use them all toward making your decisions as they relate to love and relationships this week. What will the masculine have the feminine do, surrender, contribute to the union this week? Divine guidance, surrender to divine guidance in this energy of the full moon, um, again, which just passed. And the fact that this, this guidance is available to you infinitely, right? It never runs out, it never expires. All we have to do is to seek it. Uh, this also brings in this energy of eight again for me, which is eight represents um, well, a lot of things. Abundance can be justice uh, in some cases and build, destroy, supreme math, right? If you're not contributing, basically, you are taking away from, you're detracting. If you're not building, you are destroying. If you're not with us, you're against us, right? If you're not helping, you're hurting. Uh, eight also representative of karma for me. And karmic energy. And I don't say that to be like derogatory. I mean karmic as in of the universe, right? Destined and likely containing some sort of lesson in there for us. What is the masculine himself willing to do toward the union this week? Reflection. This could help him to release the fear as well as to, you know, um, do his inner work towards spiritual growth, looking back on his life, forward towards his goals. What do I want in my future? You know, what should I take with me? What should I leave behind? All of those things. And how do I, like, muster up the, the strength, the confidence, the capacity to do it? What would the universe have the two to do? Ah, speaking of all this moon energy and the need to surrender... Looks like surrender to love. Moon tree is a card of sacred marriage. It represents the marriage between heaven and earth, um, which is what this journey is all about. And it represents the marriage of two souls coming together. Moon tree. And the outcome. Earth connection. So the flow of abundance opening up for everybody. And this card representative of earth signs for me, um, and also Libra and Gemini, because it, it just brings in the energy of Venus, period, the planet of abundance. Also, it's an indication that there's a need for us to spend some time with Mother Nature <clears throat> in order to help that flow of abundance to uh, open up. And now I had to show you this, because I shuffled to these cards maybe like three times, these same cards, this gossip opposite the brunette female, which is that karmic energy for me. Again, often a Cancer or a Leo or a Leo Cancer, like a Cuspian. And may, maybe particularly this week, represent an actual person, an actual female, mixed up in some sort of drama, creating some sort of drama for you. It could be literally gossiping about you. Or to you, and that's not good either. Gossip. 
and gifts. Somebody could be talking, actually, literally, I just got somebody could be talking about like what somebody got as a gift, maybe a birthday gift, maybe, maybe for cancer. Um, we are in the time of cancer right now. The sun is in cancer. Somebody could be talking about like what somebody got as a gift or something and starting some sort of drama about that. Gossip again. And children, representative potentially of a party of three. It can also be about new beginnings, sort of like the empress, new starts, you know, children, babies, giving birth to something. Um, but opposite gossip. Again, it could be drama involving children or maybe the mother of somebody's child or the other parent of, you know, your child or something. Or your own mother, family, your siblings. Some sort of foolishness. I'll do one more. And she's back. Okay, this karmic energy again. So like I said, I saw it opposite gossip several times when I was shuffling. And that's why I left them like this so that I could show you guys too that it kept coming up. And now you see it for yourself. It's her. I'm going to cut. And long distance. This could be connected to the energy of message from afar, perhaps. And it could be the, the distance between, you know, you and the universe and the communications coming in. This woman is looking and looks like her ship is about to come in. It may also involve some sort of party of three or just be representative of like the energy of uh, like a three of fire. For example, um, the three of wands and the traditional tarot is about one ship coming in too. And the need to perhaps be patient for that last stake in the ground, you know, before you have the four of wands. But I'm noticing that this has this ship has three sails on it. And so it may involve some sort of party of three. And I also see like all the fire energy here with the sunset. Um, of course, the sun is the ruler of the sign of Leo. But this can also bring in the energy of Aries and Sagittarius just the same. Um, and again, maybe Aquarius and Mars and Scorpio, water, communication, distance. All right. Overall energy is travel. Some of us literally traveling. For some of us, this is about movement, right? Movement in a situation maybe that had been stagnant before. All of a sudden it, it's taken off like a plane. Um, also, this is, is like about retrogrades for me because it's like a plane is like going back to revisit. And so we have several planets uh, in retrograde at this point and this or at least in shadow, um, like approaching retrograde. And so this can be about that, like that energy that's coming up. But again, this week, um, specifically Mars retrograde in Aquarius. This is also about actual vacations and stuff. And again, maybe connected to, for a bunch of people, um, the holiday here in the United States. People may be going away to visit family, have barbecues, you know, from state to state and so on. Okay, divine couple. Recent past. Masculine's higher self near future blocks to the union what the feminine can do here what the masculine can do he got two cards not on purpose <laughs> um further advice from the universe for the guidance for the two for both and the outcome also this brings in the energy of cancer too for me i just got it um, well, in the traditional tarot, the chariot, which is also about travel and planes, trains and automobiles, represents the sign of cancer. And so this is coming through with that, too. And when I picked this up, I was meant to pick it up, I guess, so that I could show you guys this twin flame is right behind it. Um, but also wallflower. So some of us may be presented with an opportunity, maybe to 
have some movement or maybe physically travel and spend some time connecting with our partner because right behind it also upright is the long distance card is back so they were in this order travel twin flame wallflower so like are you going to sit it out or are you going to dance you know you're going to get involved there's a long distance and also up right behind that union and then this energy of value and pentacles maybe capricorn again stepping in virgo taurus pl the planet and goddess venus herself goddess of abundance planet of abundance money love the material she could make all this happen the travel the coming together the next card is upside down divine couple this week face with obstacles you're going to sit it out or you're going to dance i knew we were going that way uh recent past work the energy of earth signs and putting in effort and um, trying to move these obstacles, definitely connected to Saturn and Capricorn, but also the other earth signs, the near future, young female, for some, there can be some sort of involvement with a younger female, maybe, um, a, a fire sign specifically, but for the most part, this card tends to represent the planet Jupiter and the energy of Sagittarius for me with her, you know, red hair and red skirt and youth Sagittarius, the more youthful of the fire element. Masculine's higher self is on mature woman right now. That can have more than one meaning. There can be this, you know, um, this energy represented by a female, it can be an actual character, um, a female or a feminine energy in his life, impactful upon him. Or this can also be his own inner feminine and him taking on this energy of surrender that we keep talking about. especially since there's a need to remove obstacles. And the, the, the card I just read in the beginning, our opening message suggested that when we surrender, when we're in that place of surrender, it allows us to better see what obstacles surround us. So he could be taking advantage of that. Um, further blocks to the union, manipulation, control, um, people being, you know, operated like by a marionette, um, a puppeteer. And um, or with Marionette, there's a puppeteer, <laughs> like pulling our strings. Also, as it connects to this work, I don't know how many of you saw. I did a um, a divine masculine specific karmic situation, karmic energy surrounding him, um, and with also with a pick a card. And there was one column. I think it was the first column that there was a, an earth sign female. Or, the, or that kind of energy. There was like somebody um, tugging him around, leading him around by his purse strings. And with these cards together, with this work card that represents earth energy and pentacles energy for me um, and control, this can be that again. This sort of queen of earth in reverse. It doesn't have to be an earth sign, but that kind of energy. And her eyes are green too. You know, like the, the color of earth. And there could be like a green with envy and, you know, maybe she's, she's not really your friend, even though it's a family member. Because I said for some I was feeling it could, it could even be their mother. And I had a couple of comments um, on that video that, you know, some of you said it was your mother who was like manipulating you and um, trying to like run your life. Uh, let's go to the feminine too first. Uh, what the feminine can do here. We might have some sort of at least energetic, if not an actual, we might have some sort of confrontation with this um, brunette female, this quote, like a karmic female, a toxic relationship with a feminine in our life. Um, and it can be, again, somebody's mother, maybe this person that's pulling the strings. That can be who it is. You're going to want to approach it um, you know, in a mature way. And the masculine would like that. 
Now, another thing that you can possibly do that's also mature that, you know, um, he may be pleased and you may end up pleasing yourself is if you're able to, like, just avoid the confrontation altogether, then do that. You know, it's like, um, like the seven of wands, you know, where you're presented with different things and you're able to defend yourself and ready, willing, you know, but sometimes you're not going to, you're just not going to, you're going to decide for yourself to walk away from some of the instances so that you can do that too. But some of us are going to have to actually come into confrontation with this um, brunette female, this karmic energy, who again, maybe an actual person, maybe specifically an actual woman, a female, um, and of, um, the cancer zodiac or Leo or a cuspian cancer Leo. Or maybe a Capricorn this week, too. Or Earth sign. Maybe an Earth sign. Um, and in the other reading that I did, again, the, with that, the masculine with the karmic situations, it was uh, in the cases where it was an Earth sign, it was mostly a Taurus. And I heard back from you guys about that, too. I was feeling mostly Taurus. And you're like, yep, this one is a Taurus. And they're, <laughs> you know, this is going on with that. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that it's actually like resonating so very closely to your lives. Um, you know, so we can have this actual guidance and, you know, that can be followed, not just like, you know, being up in the air and taking a chance on it. Uh, further advice from the universe as to what can be done. No. Oh, why do I want to go to this card so badly? I didn't even look at the masculine. The masculine got two cards. So let's see what's up with him. What can he do this week? True Jim. And destiny. Well, for one thing, some of you may be getting engaged or something this week. Um, or the masculine may be, that could be what the gossip is about. For whom he buys, you know, some sort of gift, a ring or something like that. Other, aside from that, this can involve an actual Gemini, of course. Um, that may be his destiny. And if it's not a, um, of the Gemini or air element at all. Um, this is also like denoting like the value, like you're not going to ultimately with whom you're going to end up or who, whom you need to be uh, masculine and that, that the universe knows you want to be is this person who is genuinely meant for you, right? That is your destiny. And this is going to be a relationship that you value so tremendously. It's not like, you know, just any old relationship or your run of the mill, you know, get together. This is like the love of a lifetime. So that's what you can do is like, you know, focus on that. Um, or at least you're looking ahead to the masculine's doing reflection this week, or you say you're doing reflection this week. Like when I did the spread from the perspective of the masculine. So like, what do you want in your future? What are you, how do you see it? And then there's adjustments that you can make is what this is saying toward your destiny. Okay. Now the further advice from the universe Ah, this is interesting because this is the card that represents the energy of karmic male for me um, and the sign of Capricorn because it's, it comes through like the devil in the tarot, which represents the sign of Capricorn um, and is very much about manipulation or can be manipulation, restriction, obstacles. Addictions, toxic relationships, karmic relationships. So further advice from the universe is to approach these again in a mature way, work on breaking free from these things and clearing your head so that you're able to see the obstacles. So surrender. Um, working on your relationship with yourself, meditation, spending time with the universe so that you're, you, you can think and see clearly from all of your eyes as to what you need to release um, and cut yourself free from. This is the energy of limitation and restriction, like Saturn, Capricorn, maybe even Jupiter in some cases, because again, Jupiter tied to karma. Outcome. Short-term heartbreak in some cases. 
Again, this can be connected to fights. I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't want to say anybody's going to be fist fighting. I mean, I guess it's possible. But, you know, I just see stuff coming up this week. Confrontation, potentially. Um, specifically, or more so, at least, for the, for the feminine. Um, but this breaking away, the masculine breaking away from who is, you know, trying to manipulate him in the cases where it's him, because this can be the feminine too. This is like just blocks of the union. Um, you know, he can end up in some sort of drama as well, or, you know, argument or, you know, now this one is not speaking to that one because I had to cut myself away from them. They didn't mean well. And that would be tied again to the retrogrades and the need to like revisit certain issues, particularly Mars in Aquarius, as well as um, the Capricorn moon, full moon, both had this energy of needing, of forcing us to um, like handle unfinished business. So if there's stuff that we really had not um, closed, we hadn't ended the chapter, things are open-ended. I think they're like some of it's blowing up this week for some. If you are one of the some, remember that the, you know, the pain, the heartbreak that's connected to it and the feeling of loss, maybe of a friend or uh, even a familial relationship. You have to cut yourself off from family or a mate, you know, you break up or whatever. Um, that, that hurt is going to be short lived. Whoop. Cards are just jumping around like crazy. The magician just jumped off the angel tarot. Not sure why. Um, <laughs> magician represents the sign of Gemini for me. So this could be connected to true Jim yet again. Um, but also the um, other mutable signs sometimes. Sagittarius, Virgo, Pisces. You are ready. You have the resources or the ability to manifest them. And life is magical. Meaning you can bring whatever into your life that you need to help you achieve your goals. Um, we all have this, but I think it wanted to be seen. And right behind it now, now that that jumped off the deck, it revealed yet another number one. And this is about manifesting, um, you know, of a much grander scale. This is global. This is expansion. This is the energy of Jupiter, the wheel with Archangel Michael, a time of positive change. A situation suddenly moves forward and fortune is on your side. So I mentioned that before when I saw the travel card, I said something may have been stagnant before. All of a sudden it takes off like a plane. Uh, and so that's this. And then we saw in the near future, what was coming up? Yes. The energy of Jupiter and Sagittarius. So something suddenly moves forward with that energy and it is, you know, to our betterment. It's, it's positive for us. But we have the ability to attract this energy because this is also a one. That means we can manifest this or, you know, uh, reject it. Are you going to, you know, like sit it out or dance? Because if we're thinking negatively, then we have the potential, at least to an extent, because it's a karmic energy, so it can still come through. But we have the extent to, to miss out if we're like, you know, repelling it rather than attracting it. In any case, opening to the King of Fire, which is still be Jupiter. This can be about Jupiter too, uh, as well as Mars, or of course the fire signs, Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. Um, if it's connected to Jupiter, then also the fixed signs. And of those, I'd say most specifically Scorpio, because um, Mars, the red planet, is also a ruler of Scorpio already. Motivational, idealistic, ambitious, and charismatic. Focus, focus, focus. Communicate with vision and be a leader. Take advice from someone creative. Of course, the king of fire is also a representation of the divine masculine in the tarot. Magician. Ooh. Okay. This is that energy about that we need to break free from. That's, this is very much like the devil for me. So the Capricorn energy we just saw with the fair male. Um, except it's minor arcana, obviously, and it's of the air element and the, the devil is major arcana and of the earth, but they're, it's like the same kind of meaning, right? An illusion of being trapped, a lack of self-confidence and being afraid to take action. So that is probably, and it's an eight. I want to make note of the eights, of course, that is probably what has prevented you from leaving this situation because the world for me is not, you know, as awesome as it is for other people. It's not bad either. I mean, it is something that's, you know, what we completed successfully, but it's something for me, like, oh, like a waiting to exhale card. Cause it's something we should have left alone a long time ago or somebody we should have left alone a long time ago. So again, maybe some stuff coming to a head this week, 
um, being forced by the universe. The universe is stepping in to make some things fall apart that, you know, we should have um, killed on our own, but we didn't. We, we failed to. And maybe we failed to because of a lack of confidence and we felt trapped. We felt stuck in those situations. So the universe is tired of it, basically. And it's saying, you're not stuck. You're not trapped. Let me help you. <laughs> All right. A job well done. A joy, contentment and gratitude in the path toward enlightenment. Um, and maybe a party of three, 21 equals three. The magician. Not just a party of three, but maybe most specifically a love triangle, since this is the love reading uh, is what that three could represent. And coming to major arcana card zero, the dreamer which in this deck at least represents to me the planet Mercury, ruler of both um, Virgo and Gemini, which is again, um, Mercury again located right now in Leo. A leap of faith, follow your dreams, that leads to unexpected opportunities. And this is about believing in miracles. And there was an overlying theme this week, not only of surrender, but about of surrendering to miracles and the belief in miracles as well, because um, I went over in the general reading as I you know, always do, on um, the Christian calendar this week, the third is the feast day of St. Thomas, you know, Doubting Thomas. Um, so that was like an overlying theme that we need to not doubt ourselves or the universe and have, you know, some faith and maybe meditate and pray and make intentions or whatever it is you like to do um, in order to increase your confidence and belief and faith in yourself and the universe. And then, you know, like acknowledge that dreams can happen, you know, come true for you too. Miracles can happen in your life too. You're not exempt from them. In fact, you know, you're, you're, you're made for them. You're destined for them. Speaking of Mercury and Gemini, the overall energy is the ace of air. Brilliant new ideas and inspirations. Seeing the truth of a situation, maybe a challenging beginning. So the ace of air is about, yeah, it's a beginning. It's a new beginning. To me, that's what's most important. But it's a beginning that it may have been difficult getting to. Like the road uh, that we had to travel may have been a rough one. And also there may be still some more bumps in it to come. But again, it's a beginning nonetheless. We may get off to a rough start but we're off to a start. So it always helps, uh, at least in my opinion, to look at the positive perspective. Crowning the masculine this week, the four of air. Time to rest or take a vacation. Four of air can be about planning that vacation. For me, the six of air is more so about actually taking it. The four of air can be about planning it. And maybe this is part of his reflection. Um, a lot more time before making a decision. So that could be going toward the reflection he said he was going to be doing this week. Also, meditation may provide answers, whatever the situation is. In general, the four of air, also a card of recovery, rest, recovery, rejuvenation, like getting your strength back, your energy back after after a three of air, right? After pain, hurt, this is your, your snap back, right? <laughs> um, masculine, surrounded by the night of water, emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, and contemplative, falling in love, or wedding proposal, the need to balance emotions and an invitation to a social event. So I told you some of you may be getting engaged or even married or people close to you um, may be getting engaged or married this week. Um, other than that, there could be other kinds of proposals that come your way, like dinner or the cocktails that we saw in the beginning with the dice. Uh, the Knight of Water is a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or someone likened to these traits or attributes and making some sort of romantic, likely proposal toward you. And here's the three of fire, three of wands I had been speaking about. Abundance, things look very good. Have patience at this time and make long-term plans. Um, so it absolutely can be about abundance, but it can also be about a party of three. And, you know, I always notice with this one, there's like these um, wands are not in symmetry. Like this one's off to the side, like it really doesn't belong. And this is the couple that are, that are here. So this could definitely be like a third wheel. Um, some sort of love triangle or something or some other sort of obstacle, somebody in your way. Again, maybe a Cancer or a Leo or Cancer, Leo, Leo, Cuspian. Um, and maybe that's why we have the, the fire and the water here next to each other right now, reflective of that. Maybe the other party is an air sign. <laughs> maybe more specifically a Gemini or an Aquarius since those have popped up the most this week. But Libra too, possibly. 
Crowning the feminine, speaking of Libra, the six of earth, gifts of money, time or effort, new career opportunities, and receiving a loan or paying off debts. The six is about love, six equals love, and the six of earth, particularly in this deck for me, represents the planet Venus because I can see all of the signs which she rules in this card. Here is Libra, here are the scales of justice. So um, like justice coming the way of the feminine this week. Also, and balance, restoration, which is what the masculine is getting to, at least as it relates to his um, physiological health, right? So maybe emotional health, spiritual health, even physical health, getting his, you know, energy back and recovering from something. Um, but the six of earth for the, or the scales of balance for the feminine mean that she's being restored in some sort of area too. And it can be a financial area, uh, material area in her life as well. But the six of earth for me represents in general, um, whether it's money, stuff, or relationships, unconditional love, because it's giving and receiving. So again, getting back to this energy of the card soft with which I began, the ability to both give and receive in a healthy way, like without agenda, out of pure unconditional love. Feminine surrounded by the night of air, intelligent, decisive, idealistic, and tireless is the night of air. Events that occur with great speed. Take time to carefully review your options. You can come up with creative solutions. The night of air is a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. It could be Libra, right? Um, or someone likened to those traits. Your attributes can also be here again, representing Mercury or Venus herself. The night of air is also an indication that um, the feminine has a decision to make or is awaiting a decision. Maybe she's awaiting the masculine to figure something out and make a decision and answer her. With the night opposite the night, night of water and opposite the night of air, um, we could be waiting for a response to this proposal, you know, going one way or the other. The masculine made a proposal to the feminine, the feminine made a proposal to the masculine. One is awaiting the, the decision. At the root, the five of air, Ew, not a fan of this one. An unwise choice. Learn what you can from this situation. Review everyone's motives. But I told you the feminine was destined for conflict this week, um, is what the other spread said. Um, the one that I just did from the perspective of the universe. It was the feminine who, you know, could like. Now, again, we can avoid it, um, perhaps. You know, we should try, if we're able to, to avoid it. But this is also conflict in which we like had a hand, very likely. Um, the five of air for me tends to be like we said something, or we did something, you know, that set some sort of wheels in motion. We were presumptuous. So we like somehow brought it upon ourselves, even if we didn't mean to, or it wasn't a malicious act, what we were doing, we, we did something that caused us to now be involved in a party to this drama. And it can also be like other types of stuff, like conflict you run into, even with strangers. Like, you know, you step on somebody's foot in the street by accident. That's just, you know, that's conflict. And then you can see then um, whether or not you can avoid, you know, further confrontation there too. You apologize right away. And, you know, depending upon the other person's reaction, maybe you're able to escape, you know, escalating any further. So any, any kind of drama like that. Um, this can also be in this position in particular, like the feminine subconscious. Uh, you're thinking about this. Um, it could just be like mental anguish and frustration, like in your own head. And maybe you're agonizing over the decision, over the fact that, you're, that you have to make one or that you're awaiting one. Crowning the union, the king of fire, motivational, idealistic, ambitious, and charismatic. Focus, focus, focus. Communicate with vision and be a leader. Take advice from someone creative. The King of Fire, again, is a representation in the Tarot of the Divine Masculine. Also a Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, maybe even a Scorpio, both Aries and Scorpio, ruled by Mars, the red planet. Could be here representing Mars itself or Jupiter or the sign of Leo in particular, crossing the night of air. Again, both Mercury and Venus located in Leo this week. Um, Mars, <laughs> retrograde in Aquarius this week. Could be that. At the root, the chariot, about which I spoke earlier too. And here's more of this moon energy and the need to surrender. And rather than allow yourself to be manipulated, take your own life by the reins and you get in the driver's seat. You make the decisions. You call the shots. An important achievement, self-discipline and willpower and public recognition. 
Um, so the drama could come, could have to do with, you know, some of somebody taking back control of their own life and the person who's been trying to control you and manipulate you, know, they don't like that. That's the drama. That can be drama too. Uh, the chariot again is about planes, trains, and automobiles. It's about travel. It's about modes of transportation. Uh, it's about movement where there hadn't been necessarily movement before. Now there is. And, um, it can be about moving too, right? Moving from one place to another. And um, also victory. It's definitely a card of victory too. And again, taking back your, your own life. You being in the driver's seat of your own life. And seven and five is three. Seven plus five is 12 is three. We have this three of fire here sitting next to it. So again, this could be some sort of drama about the party of three. Um, and maybe breaking away from the manipulation and the toxicity uh, and addictive nature of that party of three. At the heart of the matter, speaking of a party of three, it's another three. Major Arcana card number three, the Empress with Archangel Gabriel. Lavish abundance. Give birth to your dreams. Instead, nurture yourself. Um, not instead, <laughs> also nurture yourself and others. Uh, so this too connecting to our original message of both giving and receiving and nurturing ourselves. The Empress card represents the planet Venus for me again, uh, ruler of Libra, Taurus and Gemini. So we kind of have, um, this Empress energy here in both places for the feminine, Feminine receiving something, some sort of gift of abundance, maybe from Venus herself, right? Blessing us this week. As it relates to conflict, there can be something with, um, again, a mother or a mother, some sort of issue with a pregnancy and or a child. This could be um, your yeah, conflict with your family or maybe your man's mother or, or his, the mother of his children. Or conflict over you could the feminine could be again thinking about this anguishing about this knowing that this week the masculine is deciding you know what he's going to do if he's going to you know continue this situation um, or move on. I'm going to further clarify these with the Doreen Virtue Romance Angels. I hadn't anticipated our plan for this reading to be this long, but here we go. I guess we, I, we need more information. I'm beginning with worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life and opening to new love. I can tell you what this is here. New starts, new beginnings, fresh love, the old you dead and gone. Should you um, take the challenge to release it? A new person has stirred your romantic feelings and you'll get to know them too. Getting to know each other as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. Getting to know each other and passion. More of this fire energy. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Whoop. What is this? Make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. I'm just going to stick it back in here. And put this back where it belongs, getting to know each other and children. Yeah, something could be going on with children here or a child. Your love life is being affected by children. The Ace of Air could have something to do with truth coming out also, by the way. And that may be the difficult start. So there may be some sort of truth about a child. Um, it is yours, it's not yours. And, you know, the feminine deciding what she's going to do. In that regard, either way, children, your love life is being affected by children. I will cut. And back to worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. So from... 
putting it back to this week, it could be, again, waiting this decision um, could be what this is talking about. The Ace of Air, also a major card of victory, just like the Chariot. And, of course, the um, Together... they would indicate like an, an, an ending and a new beginning to something. Um, the 11 and the 7, 18 and 9, an ending and a new beginning, like death and rebirth. But, you know, so it's like a fresh start for you. Um, and again, you're hashtag winning. <laughs> you're on the winning side, even if it was difficult getting to. It was a struggle getting there. The overall energy is religious factors. Your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. Um, this can have to do with our ideologies and the need to break free, again, from manipulation and things that are holding us back. Obstacles can be our old belief systems that we need to shed. Um, could be things involving children, like the inability to end a relationship um, with your child's parent because you got children. You think they got to stay together. You don't. I talked about this came up in one of the other readings this week. That's why I talked about this. Um, Different things with family members. People feel like, you know, well, they're my family. I have to speak to them forever. No, you don't. We can end relationships, you know, so it can, it can be thing, attached to things like that with the belief systems, things that we, we feel stuck with and in, but we're not. We can shed them. And two again. I don't know what's with the two this week. The top, the four of air, true love. This is the romance of a lifetime. So this might be what the masculine is thinking about and, you know, trying to make some sort of decision about or come to some sort of plan. And again, maybe plans to visit. Atop the night of water, I told you some of us may be getting engaged. This is some, some sort of proposal. Um, but aside from actual literal engagement, this is also about the fact that our love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Atop the three of fire, this is the toxic codependent relationship, the party of three, this third wheel. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. Again, maybe a cancer it's sitting right here next to the chariot. Atop the six of earth, stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. Um, so you also want to think about, again, not only positive energy for attraction, but, you know, the ability to give and receive and opening yourself up to receiving love, too. Atop the night of air, a wedding here, mirroring engagement. Somebody, again, getting married and engaged. Um... It may be, you know, you, maybe somebody close to you as well. That is, um, this is happening with this week. Aside from that, this is, of course, representative of um, the sacred marriage, similar to the moon tree. And just the two souls coming together. This situation involves marriage. Atop the five of air, it's conflict, it's control issues. Allow this situation instead to unfold naturally. All right, so release this, surrender this negative energy. Transmute it to love. Atop the king of fire, forgiving and learning. And it may be in relation to specifically forgiving the masculine. Um, but anybody, anybody that we're holding on to, again, I went over these things before, the resentment, regret, the inability to forgive, anything we're holding, anybody against whom we're holding on to, um, you know, negative attachments or emotions we need to release as you release and heal the past you experience more love in your present moments that allows us to live in the now rather than sit it out we can dance right if we're willing to forgive but for some it's going to be specifically um the masculine's need for forgiveness and that's why um, it sits here next to this four of, of air the four of air is after the three of air of course or three of swords after the pain after the hurt and recovering Part of the process is that forgiving and then learning from, you know, the heirs of our ways on both sides. Moving forward after that. Atop the chariot, you got to move on and move up away from this person. I told you that's what this bottom row was about. And it's coming up. Free yourself. It's time to take back control of your life. So where this somebody is manipulating you like a puppeteer, you got to um, cut those cords 
right, and, and run off like Pinocchio. You're, you're a real boy. <laughs> you can leave, get away from them. At the heart of the matter, atop the three, um, or Major Arcana card three, rather, the Empress, we have two cards. Aww. One is the fact that you're reconciling those of you who are separate and who have been at a distance. Um, and we're the, I'm feeling that also that we're the, where it wasn't um, a, a, an actual separation. You were only separated by distance, but you, you know, were still in contact. Then those um, people traveling, and that's why it's sitting here atop the chariot too, traveling to see one another or connecting somehow um, with each other. Someone from your past is returning to your life. And the means to help that to happen is through playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. So not approaching each other, each other with um, heavy energy or with words that are triggers that would, you know, turn each other off. We got to, um, you know, show love and be positive with each other. And that's how we're going to bring each other back. And it is what the energy of, um, like the mutable signs, Sagittarius, Gemini, Pisces, Virgo. These are the youthful signs. And that's what, for me, the playfulness comes. All right, let me do the advice. Do that. I'm also being guided to tell you guys that in the last spread, when I said that for the most part, um, rather than a young girl, that card with the young girl on it, um, that's called young female in all red. And, um, rather than her being a fire sign for most people, that card is about Jupiter, as I mentioned. And the reason being what's coming up in the near future with regard to Jupiter, Jupiter goes direct on July 10th. So that's just like another week and a half. And, um, just a few days before the next, you know, major moon phase, the new moon. And also, um, the eclipse, the, the next partial solar eclipse. So that's the energy that's coming up in the near future that may, you know, impact you particularly. Also, um, being told to <laughs> talk to you feminine about this energy. Some of you are married to something from that you have to let go. And for a good part, it's a, it's the energy of marriage or the idea of marriage itself and this um desire to like make a 3d relationship a 5d one or vice versa to make a 5d relationship of the universe a 3d one like how you want to force it together and that's one of the control issues from which you have to free yourself and you know you have to recognize that if you want a 3d relationship you have access to that, you know, and you, you can sort of date who you want and all those kind of things. But, um, as it relates to a 5d relationship or any kind of relationship that it's karmic and of the universe, um, so not karmic meaning bad or derogatory, but karmic meaning, you know, again, of the universe and destined and, you know, that contains some kind of lesson or whatever, then that, you know, in itself by virtue, it's of the universe. So you're not in charge. You don't get to decide, you know, and automatically, you know, from, from the beginning, once you know you're connected, like plan the wedding and all that kind of stuff. Um, of course, you're allowed to dream and, you know, have desires and how would you would like things to go. But to try to force an outcome or to be holding on to an outcome so tightly that the universe isn't allowed to work in the way it wants to. Um, is a block. It's, it's like that energy of expectation or expecting that comes up in the Universal Love Oracle, um, which I haven't seen today, but maybe we're about to with the advice. I don't know. Um, but when we try to like dictate to the universe how to bless us, instead we don't get blessing blessed at all. Like we block our blessings. So this uh, control where. Even like we're trying to force the, the masculine's hand to act a particular way and, you know, um, unite with us in a particular way, you know, like now, especially those who are among the, you know, elect and the illumined. Once you believe that that's what you are, then that means that your 
ultimate union is attached to prophecy, is attached to the scriptures, is attached to like when the prophecy is fulfilled. So it's not only you and your woman or man that uh, needs to come into union. It is a group that, you know, on or around the same time will, according to the prophecies. So again, of course, you can't force it. How are you? You're not in charge of that. You have to wait until the time comes. And everybody says that um, anybody that tells you that they know the exact time, again, as it relates to the prophecies or the scriptures, would, according to those prophecies and scriptures, be lying. Um, especially according to the scriptures, Matthew 24, 42, uh, and a few verses thereafter, you know, talk about the thief in the night and how um, the master would have protected his house if he knew the thief was coming. But we don't get to know. All we're supposed to do is prepare. Prepare for who might be coming to our house and ultimately, you know, the universe knocking at our door to say it's our time to be, you know, super great. Uh, we can prepare for that, but we can, we don't know the day and we don't get to plan how the day goes, <laughs> like like our wedding. When, when it's your 3D wedding, right, you're legal, getting legally bound to someone, you can be in charge of that. You know, there's paperwork and stuff involved. But when it's just souls involved being joined together, that has nothing to do with paperwork or the 3D or man's law or man's timing or any of that. So um, whether it's that or you are married to some other sort of energy or circumstance that is negative and an obstacle for you ultimately and holding you back or physically to someone, you know, some of us may have some relationship to which we're attached that is also unhealthy and we have to break away, uh, whether it's a romantic one or a friendship um, or a familial one or something. You, you need to surrender all of that. And that's where the playfulness comes in too. The idea is, um, again, to not bring this baggage, you know, well, the wedding, we need to get married and like scare him off or try to force him or chase him, you know, um, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that because you're holding yourself back. Instead, you know, be more lighthearted and like hashtag YOLO, live in the moment, the present, like, uh, a mutable sign and most specifically of them, I would say at least this week, uh, Gemini and Sagittarius. All right. So that said, here's our advice beginning with the universal love oracle for the masculine. Again, message from afar and this energy of fire. Uh, and I think this is again, Jupiter coming for you, but it could be, uh, Mars or, um, any person with whom you may come into contact this week or, and the, may be particularly impactful upon your life this week as it relates to, you know, your love and emotions and your relationships. And they may be a direct fire sign, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, right? They could be a Scorpio too. And you may be in communication. It could be long distance communication. Um, It could even be like, um, you know, uh, telepathic. You just feel yourself connect with them in your dreams. Uh, this is also guidance from the universe, of course, directly. For the feminine, answered prayer. So again, this is our dreams coming to, our wishes being granted, our prayers being answered. That doesn't happen so easily and so well when we are, you know, um, anticipating the outcome and like, you know, putting a desired outcome into the air rather than allowing the universe to work for us and through us, um, you know, in our lives. So allow for answered prayer. Again, just stay optimistic about your love life. That's, that's your task. Stay positive, positive thoughts, happy thoughts can be about being together, but not about, you know, not, don't be overly uh, specific when you're giving it to the universe, because then it just ends up not necessarily happening at all. Um, again, being blocked. Whoa. Masculine, for some of you, this can be, um, this thing that you have to free yourself from too, can involve addiction to some sort of substance as well. Not just the person. Uh, so yes, 
it's quite possibly a love triangle and a person, a third wheel that needs to be removed. Um, and the, the suit of fire more so than any of the other, you know, elements tends to mean love triangle, you know. Not only am I saying it because it's the because it's the love reading, but that's what the suit of fire tends to mean because the wands are considered phallic in the tarot. So for some of you or a lot of you, it is a relationship um, that you need to break away from. And um, think carefully about your proposals and stuff you may be some of you um considering elevating your relationship from a, a 3d from a 3d perspective and maybe again getting physically engaged to the wrong person now ultimately would that be would there be a karmic lesson involved if you did that and you went through with it and you got married to you know somebody other than the partner the universe has chosen for you yeah there'd be a lesson and you know will things work out as they're destined to work out yeah that's what destiny means but you you know you're guided we do have some free will we have free will to extend <laughs> um and you're being guided to think long and hard about true love versus you know codependency and like weigh the pros and cons not coincidentally the divine feminine mirroring this energy of yours has the scales of justice sitting here Okay. And the energy of unconditional love that she's wanting to receive and to give. Um, yeah, so some of you may be physically getting married again and, and or considering getting married and to not the right person. And that's what this is about. For others, um, there's actual substances involved to which you're addicted that's getting in the way of your relationships and getting in the way of your your clarity your mind's clarity and your ability to think things through and to you know make the right choices for yourself so you may want to look at that um the full moon is a good time to like let these things go with the full that's when i stopped smoking actually it was with the full moon and it wasn't all you know my doing <laughs> I asked the universe to help me to stop smoking and it did. Like when I tried to smoke again, um, I was like choking to death and I was like, okay, you know, there's that, that the full moon really did take my ability to smoke, you know, just like I asked it to. Um, I didn't tell the universe how to make me, how to help me to stop smoking. I was married to cigarettes. I just asked it to help me. And the way that it helped me was by saying, okay, if you try to smoke again, you're gonna choke. <laughs> you're just not gonna be able to, you're physically not gonna be able to smoke. And I was not. So um, there are, you can ask the universe for help with your addictions, whatever they're to. And I know that today there's a lot of more um, serious things as it relates to substances than um, Cigarettes, this country's got a huge op opioid problem and stuff like that. So anybody who has those issues, I am not making light of it. I don't wish to make light of it and ever would I. Um, at the same time, we got to be willing and, and able to, to talk about it and to broach it. And so again, the better way to do that is not, you know, being overly serious and bringing bags and talking at you. It's rather to like talk to you and with you and have a, a, a shared conversation. That's how you help people. That's how you bring about uh, recapture romance and things like that, all right? Um, okay, <laughs> back to the advice. Masculine, Ah, oh, blonde female. This is the representation of the divine feminine for me in this deck. So again, um, some of you are being guided away and do you still have free will, like I said before, guided away from this other person whether it's a romantic interest or it's your uh, you know a family member particularly your mother since i kept feeling mother for a bunch of people and we have did have the empress right here in the heart of the matter um your mother telling you who she wants you with or whatever um you're being guided to the divine feminine now it's still up to you to 
do this meditation and thought and make a decision. And hopefully that, that decision um, will be fair and just and will allow you to exchange unconditional love uh, with another. Feminine. For us, spiritual growth. And I think that's um, specifically those of us who are battling um, being married to something or someone from which to free ourselves, right? When we do, then we are of course ascended further on our journey and you know because it's connected to spiritual growth anytime we not only like hear the guidance and look for the guidance but follow it and follow through um you know we we grow anytime we learn a lesson the hard way a karmic lesson the hard way we grow you know so whatever choice you make the outcome is spiritual growth. Masculine, your card from the angels and the angel tarot is the five of water. Things not turning out the way you'd hoped, not seeing the positive in a situation and crying over spilled milk. You definitely want to let this three, this party of three go. If that comes to your mind, if you're meditating, you're thinking, you're deciding, what should I do with my life? And there's a third thing in your life that is a distraction to you, a detriment to you, toxic to you you are going to want to let it go, no matter how connected to it or them you are. Um, you're just going to want to. And, you know, I pray that you actually do because you got these two beautiful cups still standing. All right. And that's a representation of the two of cups. And as I was working over here, I did see the two of cups by accident. I didn't mention it, but I did. Feminine for us, it's the ability to persevere. And to keep going, to keep pushing, regardless of what we come up against this week. Don't give up. Protect that which you've created. Have courage and believe in yourself. So even if we are going through some sort of internal struggle and having to fight our demons and cut them off, cut people, places, and things off with which we no longer align, including our own ego, <laughs> our own insecurities and, and all of that, um, we have the power to, to do that, the strength to do that and to make it through to the other side, even where we feel like we're down and out. The universe is saying you are not, and here is the energy to persevere. Um, again, this is ultimately leading to the answer to your prayers, what you've been asking for, but you gotta do the work. Lastly, from the romance angels to the masculine, calling in your soulmate, your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. Again, that's a, so there's somebody or something and for a lot, it feels like somebody uh, in the way. And what you want to do is <laughs> cut them away and allow the soulmate in with positive energy. And feminine, you just trust in the process that that's what's happening and do your work in mind, your business. Like literally, <laughs> this situation is calling for you to have faith. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this week's love reading. If you did... I always forget to say this because it's not what's on my mind, um, but it's a YouTube thing. Please actually like the video. If you liked the video, share and do subscribe. And when you subscribe, you have to hit not only the subscribe button, but also the little bell. So apparently hitting subscribe sends you the readings and puts them in you know, a, a section labeled subscriptions for you, but doesn't necessarily tell you that I have done them and that they're there for you waiting. So click on both the subscription button and the little bell so that you get your notifications. Um, more and more creators far larger than myself and in different you know, areas of, of all sorts actually you know, navigating away from YouTube, at least in part because of um, like greater restrictions that they keep putting on, on the creators and on, you know, as it relates to advertising and all kinds of things. And so we, we've got to be more diligent about this. And even me who, um, you know, from a general standpoint, like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about, you know, like, share, subscribe. That's why I always forget to say it. it. I've been on for over two years and it's not something that I've ever like asked for um, until now because it's being pushed 
and I need it, I guess, if I want to stay, be able to stay on YouTube, if I want them to even uh, let anybody know that I exist and I'm on here and, you know, use the vehicle to help more people, you know, I, I got to do it. So I would appreciate it again if you would like, share, subscribe to the actual video um, and to my, to my channel if you did enjoy it and find my guidance helpful. If you would like a reading more personal to you, hit me up. If you would like um, any of my other services, energy work or whatever, hit me up. I never officially extended my sale, um, but I have continued to give people the sale price if they have you know, inquired and wanted to either get a reading or, um, you know, to, to purchase some energy work and healing and, and things like that. I have continued to um, extend the sale to, to those that, that asked me, but I never officially did. And I do want to officially put, make a sale and put it out there. So I'll have to do that too. And you guys uh, can look for that, but don't let that be a detriment to you and, and hold you up if you need help now. Because again, the attacks are greater than they have been. I'm sure you, you don't need me to tell you that. You might just need me to remind that, remind you of that. You don't need me to tell you that because you're experiencing them yourself. Um, things are happening. People are losing their items. Items are breaking. People are losing their jewelry. It's coming off. Stones are breaking by themselves. All of a sudden, it's in half. Um, again, hair is falling out. <laughs> Nails are breaking. Just all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. And that's very clear. Um negative energy that's being hurled at you and I can help. All right. Namaste angels.